You suck at drift. Oh, this is great. What are you doing? So you guys have one of the only steel cab 6100 trucks. All these other fiberglass bodies trucks just look like spaceships. Like there's nothing cool about them. Like let's make a truck look like a truck. It's story time with Nick and Chris Eisenhower. Hey, that's us. October 2007. Your guys' first race. Yes. You know what stands out? Was us taking every single tool we owned <laughs> down to the desert thinking that we would need it. We took we took the air compressor. We took, we took the air compressor with no generator. No, we had a generator. But like yeah. I remember my dad being so worried about we wouldn't have a tool that we needed or a yeah. part that we needed yeah, yeah. that we literally emptied our entire garage into the bed of two trucks and took everything down there. Like all of our jack stands, floor jacks, the I top box. I think it's box. like everything but like the drill press. Yeah, like sweat. Hey, we, everything but the wind bring the welders, but we brought like grinders yeah. and air compressors and like scrap steel and like plate metal. But we didn't have a welder, but we yeah. brought the scrap steel. And I remember just doing trip after trip. And that, that wasn't just the first race. Like that went on the first like two seasons of racing. Yeah, we took the entire garage. Yeah, we emptied the garage. And then we realized like we don't need any of this stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. That stands out. Yeah. What else stands out? Uh, I think our red crow fire suits being yeah, way those, too big. Yeah. Are they red? Yeah. Yeah. No, they were red. Big the single red. layer, like <laughs> ones you buy off the shelf. Pajama from, like, suits. OW. It was like yeah. yeah. And the smell of like a brand new HJC and like a brand new like air blower and like just in there, just yeah, smelling all that. Yeah. When you guys were, did you guys race together like co-driver driver? No. Or. How'd that work? Did dad drive? The first race, I think dad drove the whole thing. Yeah. And then you and I swapped the passenger seat. Because did you start with dad? I think you started with yeah. dad, and then I got in, and dad was, like, hyperventilating. Mm -hmm. Like He was very nervous. Because we were on lap. Like, when I got in, it was, like, what, six or seven laps or something yeah, like cause that? Yeah, because it was, like, a shorter race. Or it, was shorter, it was shorter mileage, but, like, more laps. And he had been on, like, lap three or four by the time I got in, so he was just, like done just <laughs> hyperventilating and i'm just like oh god are we gonna make it <laughs> we made it like yeah we did fine but yeah that's a, a lot of that seems kind of like a blur like i remember things that stand out like doing the pre-running and like camping and all that stuff but the yeah. race itself i don't remember a second of it i just remember just being in a car and like that's it like i don't remember any specifics of the course or anything i remember the sand washes because yeah. the truck just didn't like the sand. At yeah. All. Oh, and like going up like back by Jip, like going up through the sand, like yeah. up down stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, well, that stands out. That's awesome. Funny stuff. Yeah. So the the early years, you know, um, you guys, you guys had a name, Bro Dozer Motorsports. Um, where did uh where did that name come from, and is it ever coming back? No, I don't it's think it'll ever come back. It's gone. No, it's, it's just it's forever like remembered in a banner in the shop, and that's it. But uh, no, it was because in high school and everything, I played. I found a lot some of... shirts, by the way. I found some shirts. I found some old Brodos <laughs> shirts. From, like they're white. Like who the hell makes race shirts out of white? Yeah. We did for some reason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those will be on eBay soon. Yes. But uh, no, because I in high school when all this started, like I played music. That was like my whole group and all my friends. Like we rode BMX bikes and played music and all this stuff. And they had no idea like what off road trucks were, so they just kind of grouped us in as like a bunch of bros. And like, oh, working on your bro dozer. Like, that's what they called the truck forever. And like, my dad just loved it. So we just like, that's it. We made stickers and we made t shirts. <laughs> we plastered and... it on the side of the truck. Huge like sticker the on the side. Yeah. It was just like, huge sticker on the bedside. Mm -hmm. You said bro dozer motorsports. Yeah. So. It's good. But then, and then like, as things got more professional, like we actually LLC'd it. And like, yeah, no, it was, it was an actual legit, business I, name for we a We had a debit card that said Brodozer Motorsports on yeah. it. Like it was a legitimate business. Yeah. It got real tough though, like when we go to sit down with like more corporate companies like later on in life and be like, oh, okay, yeah, no. Uh, so, you know, the LLC or like write the check, make it out to uh, <clears throat> Brodozer Motorsports. No, like, can you spell that? We're like, <laughs> oh man. B R O dash D O Z. -E yeah, yeah, it had a yeah. dash and everything. So <laughs> it was pretty bad. <laughs> yeah, it got hard. Yeah, we tried to like negotiate like a real contract, and you're just like, Phew, we should change the name of this. Yeah. So, you guys mentioned your dad. You you guys raced with your dad your very first time. Your family, I feel like, has always been the entire driving force behind your guys' race program. So, what is that? How has the prog program evolved from that? Is is your family still a big aspect of it? Big time. Yeah, I would say so. It's always been a family thing, and I think it always will be. Um, like, Dad started racing, 
a 10 car back in the 80s or something yeah, like that. Yeah, I raced a couple times with a buddy, and yeah. then we started doing our own thing, and, like, his kids and that whole story of us figuring all this stuff out. And But, yeah, it's like our parents are divorced, but they've never missed a race together. Yeah. Like, yeah. mom and dad together, like, they show up, everybody. It's a huge family thing. It's just a, kind of a fun Yeah, it, it even trickles down into, like, our wives and kids now. You know, they're always at the races. The kids are always at the races. Like, it's a family thing. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to change. All right. Uh, Chris, this one's for you. Um, in 2021, your entire team was seen wearing all white hooded outfits for a race that you guys <laughs> attended. I can, can you speak confirm on confirm or deny that there might be photo evidence of us. Bless the dude. Yeah. Yeah. No, that was i uh, I'll pass the blame off to that one on to Justin and Nick. <laughs> um, <laughs> true. They thought it'd be a cool idea, which it was, you know, we stood out. At, I think it was King of the Hammers, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were the talk of the whole pit row mm-hmm. of King of the Hammers. Yeah. Like, oh, man, look at all those guys all white. Are they painters? Are they house painters? <laughs> like, what is going on over there? Yeah, I'll so. take yeah, I'll take a little blame on that. We had, like, this vision that it would be, like, a cool, like, homage to, like, you know, early 90s, like, late 80s, like, racing where, like, you know, white work pants and white shirts. Like, oh, this is going to look great. Which it was. Like, it was cool. I think it made a statement. Mm-hmm. I think it, it did really well on social yeah. and everything like that. But we for sure just looked like a bunch of house painters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's cool. It's all right. People talk about it still. Oh, yeah. That's all that I matters. think we still have. I still have my white jeans mm-hmm. and nice. my white sweatshirt. You don't wear them? When I, I paint the, the house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but That's awesome. We so have. that same race, 2021 King of the Hammers, was that the first time you guys raced King of the Hammers? Yeah. Yeah, so we came in full swing. (laughs) We're coming in, first race of King of the Hammers. We're showing up in all white, trying to make a statement. Was it the first year or was it the second year? No, I think it it was the first year. Yep, it was the first year. All right, so first year King of the Hammers. There is a post-race interview, and Chris looks like he's about to die. And I I feel like you guys said that the course was really rough. What, What was that course like for you guys? Yeah, so it had rained like the entire week before so the ground was like super soft and like wet underneath and then by like the lap three or four whatever yeah, just like so when the yeah when the when the moisture gets held down below and the dirt starts packing in it makes it real hard pack and it just square just edges. square like the worst race course i've ever been around like to date still yeah like just like we were on 40s and it was just square edged 40 inch holes the entire time yeah just oh it was terrible yeah, and there was before, because that was the second time we'd raced that truck. Yeah, and I was still using ear cups in my helmet, not right. ear buds. Yep. And everybody knows how loud that truck is, and so I remember getting out of the truck, like taking my helmet off, and everybody just sounded like Mickey Mouse. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. My head was just ringing because you know we just did like seven hours or whatever it was right. in that thing, just full tilt on the exhaust. Just six or seven grand <sighs> the entire time. It was just terrible. So bad. Your, your face literally says it all at yeah. the end of the yeah. race. Yeah. Your hair so your messed up. And you're just up. like staring off into <laughs> the distance. Yeah. It was so miserable. Yeah, I think we, got, we got like 12th or 13th or something yeah, miserable like, like that. We, we didn't even so like bad. finish that well, but like we finished. Yeah, but it, yeah, we, it looked like we had just drove like a first place race. Like we were yeah. on the pipe all day <laughs> long, but really we are just like mid backpack. We didn't have any surviving. lights. And like we came in like at oh, dark. Yeah. With like just the like the stock headlights, yeah. we're like we don't need lights. We'll finish in the daylight. Yeah, we were wrong. No, like, yeah, we yeah we took all the lights off the truck. Yeah, it was just the stock halogen headlights, like ninety five F one fifty headlights, just those. Yeah. That's it. And then I think we had like the top corner lights on, which weren't doing anything. Yeah, yeah, like the yeah. cornering lights. You know, yeah. like God, weren't so even bad. doing much. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, well, uh, yeah, I just I love that that post race interview. You guys just destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, um, the next year, you guys went to Rage at the River, mm-hmm. and Chris, what what happened to Rage at the Man, River twenty twenty two? Every time, huh? Uh, was that when we crashed the truck? That was, that was when we... yeah, you guys crashed. Oh, yeah. Crash guy. So we started off the line with Darren, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, door to door, Darren. Him and I checked out. We had like a pretty substantial lead. Um, he had like a minute 30 on me or something like that. And I had nothing for him. We came around. We were only supposed to do four laps and they, they goofed up in the timing trailer. I got goofed up. I didn't know exactly how many laps we were on and how many we were supposed to do. 
they sent me out on a fifth lap and we were going and we caught a slower competitor and he it was like in a bottleneck area so a single lane he gave me the lane to pass and then he like turned back into me and i had nowhere to go and it just clipped the right front of the truck and just sent us up into a spiral we were doing i don't know 60 or 70 when we were trying to pass him um yeah we ended up sideways on the course driver side up and i crawled out keith crawled up and it was definitely a bummer for sure you know yeah. it was a lot of work yeah yeah that, yeah. that i feel like that's the thing that like crashing you know i feel like the trucks are pretty safe now mm-hmm. right but it's i mean you guys are doing everything afterwards yeah. Yeah. so you guys are looking at that at the like the mountain of work and that's the thing afterwards. like when we crashed it like if it was a fiberglass cab truck it's like oh whatever like replace some tubes here and there and put a fiberglass cab on it but it's like now i gotta find an f100 cab and those things are coming very scarce to find so we sourced one found it and then it was just like what a month or two months of work. Yeah, because we were trying, we had it to pre run KOH. Yeah, so it was like a month and a half of just like every night in the shop trying to get it back together because we needed to use it as a pre runner for King of the Hammers. So, yeah, on top of prepping the spec truck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we blew up the motor in the spec truck at Rage of the River, so we had that to prep. Yeah, it was kind of It was a, not fun. No. It was not yeah. fun at all. Yeah, that's the thing too. It's like when we drive the cars, like, oh, aren't you scared? It's like, no, not, not really. Like, Crashing hurts, but yeah. we're going to be okay yeah, for the we'll most right. part. Yeah, you, you kind of block I, out all yeah. of like, oh, man, like let's just drive as hard as we can yeah. to finish or win, you know? Yeah, but I always just worry. Like, I don't worry about getting hurt. I worry about all the work we have to do yeah. after. <laughs> like, especially because, like, yeah. you know, taking a corner off one of these trucks, like, that'll put us down some serious amount of time. Like, we can't just drop it off at the shop. and like, oh, just send us the invoice. Like, no, no. like, we got to build all this <laughs> stuff. So. Yeah. so what keeps you guys going through that? Like, why, why continue doing that? no idea uh, if that's it, a that's a question it, people ask us all the time I, it's i don't know it's semi of an addiction i guess you know like there is no other feeling like racing an off-road car like you, you you don't get the same feeling like driving xyz on the road or whatever you know what i mean like i don't know i remember todd arthur making a pretty good point because like I was like, oh, we should race this, we should race that. But Todd's always like, yeah, but what other form of racing do you get to jump things and sure. drive a car? I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like, this is kind of it. Like, between this and rally, and that's just, like, so far-fetched. Like, that's not really an option. Yeah. It's like off-road racing, you get to do it all. You know, you get to drive the car like it's a road racing car. You get to jump it. You get to yeah. go out in the middle of nowhere and see kinds of cool places. It's pretty much, like, the end-all, be-all of motorsports. You get to do every aspect yeah. like every discipline of driving you get to do in these things yeah because you get the like the road rally like style courses like the silver states the vegas torinos where you got to like have a lot of car control and then you get like the big whoops like through the mint and stuff like that where you're legitimately on the throttle stop hoping that you just have enough top speed to just keep the car going straight That's like scary. there's a video of the 6100 truck from the mint just wide open like he's on the throttle stop and i'm just like holding my belts and I'm just like well, hopefully this works out well. Yeah. Like all the way down. And she's like, you're skipping across these things at over 100 miles an hour. So. Oh. Yeah, you don't get to do that in anything else. Like, I don't think you're doing that in a spec Miata. Like, I don't think that's something you do. Like, you get, sure, you get the thrill of like pushing a corner. Right. But like, we'll do that. And then we'll go push a corner at the bottom too. But you're not on like asphalt where you're like relying on the tarmac to hold you. You're in the dirt where you're like, oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. So it's just. And it's like, even the lap races, like, you think that the corner is going to be the same. Because you were just there like 100 miles ago, but you also had 100 plus other competitors run through that same corner that changed it. Mm -hmm. So now the rocks are moving, the whoops are changing, the corners are changing, so it's not the same consistent track each time. So I think that's just what keeps bringing us back to this stuff is the, the unknown, I guess. Yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, it's like it's kind of like a like a big puzzle every time, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like, you know, there is so much work, but everything you guys just said is like it's that's the reason you guys do it it's the it's that thrill that that literally i mean i remember the first time i uh i rode in craig stewart's truggy oh yeah yeah it's that that like blue one like Uh weird looking (laughs) yeah truggy and we had just gotten out of my dad's blazer which was like leaf sprung just you know Sure. Not not very big travel or anything. Yep. And uh, we got in that truggy, and that was the first time I was in anything, like, linked and big. And I 
the feeling that you feel going over holes that like don't yeah. don't look like you, you should be able to go over shouldn't that. Shouldn't be doing this. Yeah. 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 It's I've never felt that literally in any other form of motorsports. No. I went to the track once and they like somebody put me in a in a car and they're like go scare him. I'm like I it, it, we're going around a road. Yeah. yeah, you could yeah, try. Yeah. I mean, yeah. if we, we roll, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, fly off a track or something. <laughs> but like, that. like there, there's just nothing that compares to to no. being in the dirt in yeah. in something that's big. I think the first time I rode in like a legitimate high horsepower like trophy truck was with Brandon Arthur in Blaster City. We went down testing and we like had our loop or whatever that we would do in the F100 and it was like I-beam back in the day. So like our top speed was like 65, you know, like really getting after it at 65, you know? Well, I rode with Brandon and like, he's a wheel man. Like he clicked third going down like, um, Foster city, Maine. And we're just like floating through the big holes. I was like, Oh wow. Yeah. This, this is a trophy truck. Like this is high horsepower. This is what mm-hmm. these things will actually do. Yeah. You know, so it hooked me from there. You know? Yeah, I think I remember you talking about the brake, the braking. Oh, dude, yeah, that's something that nobody talks about. We all talk about horsepower and jumping and wheel travel and all this stuff, but like, the brakes on these trucks are insane. Like, I remember I rode a Sean Kroll. Yep. And we were in Barstow, and like, you go down, you go up Main, and you make the right, and then we're coming to the huge double downs, and I'm like full panic because we're like full speed still, like on the gas and we're like getting closer and getting closer. And I'm like, who am I to tell this guy to slow down? Like he's a professional. He knows what he's doing. And I'm just like, we're going to die. We're going to die. We're going to die. And then he jumps on the brakes and Oh, it hurts so bad. Cause I wasn't ready for it. It just like threw me into the belts and just like, Oh, and it's like, we don't really talk about that much cause it's not exciting, but the braking power on these cars is insane yeah. for being in the dirt. Yeah. If you have them set up right and you have the nice compounds and the tires and everything like matched well, like it will legitimately like pull you through the belts. Yeah. It's crazy. And so that's like, we get real sore, like talking about King of the Hammers and all that stuff or like more of a tighter race where you're on the brakes a lot. It's like, yeah, you know, you're sore from hitting the bumps and like getting jarred around, but just like leaning in and leaning in and like going into every corner on the brakes, like, dude, it puts a toll on your body. But yeah, yeah, braking is rowdy in these things. Yeah. It's a cool aspect of motorsports in general. I feel Mm -hmm. like nobody talks about braking that much, but it's like you're feeling so much force on the body for those ones. Um, so you guys have one of the only steel cab 6,100 trucks. I think so. I think maybe the only, uh, I haven't seen, I think there's one. been like 1400 trucks that have put yeah. spec motors in. Yeah. Like Vinny's raced like Mexico yeah. with his, but uh, I think we're the only like truck. tube chassis steel cab specifically built just for 6,100. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So what, why, why not? Cause it's cool, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it's 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 kind of like our roots you know we've raced 1400 trucks for so long and that's just what we do and so we're like oh let's move up a class it's like yeah but all these other fiberglass bodies trucks just look like spaceships like there's nothing cool about them like let's yeah. make a truck look like a truck like i'll post on the internet sometimes of like make off-road trucks trucks again like that's my favorite thing because it's just like dude like I respect it. It's cool. There's aerodynamics. There's fitness. Yeah, there's a lot to the bodies these days. Yeah, they're great looking things. There's a reason why they're that way. Yeah. So like us, we're like, okay, if we're going to build one and we have the opportunity, we better stand to it and let's build an off-road truck. Yeah. Let's make this thing a cab truck. Go back to the heydays of the 90s, you know, where -hmm. where eight trucks and trophy trophy trucks were actual trucks. Yeah, you got to think too, like what kind of got everybody in the world stoked on off-road racing was that like early 90s, like factory backed off-road racing. And those guys would literally take, like, from, like, Fairway Ford or whatever, you know? Like, they'd get an F-150. Like, all right, let's build an off-road truck out of this. Like, that was cool to us because, like, it's an obtainable thing. It's relatable. You see it. Like, Joe Schmo could drive that truck down the street and also, you know, oh, look, this guy's racing it. And, like, that's kind of – I think off-road racing has really lost touch with that, building all these, like, spaceship-looking off-road things. It's like, sure, it's got a Ford grill and some, like – goofy resized version of a raptor headlight but <laughs> it's not that's not a real truck like that's not gonna sell pickup trucks like that's not doing any credit to ford or to chevy or to anybody right and so for us we're like all right let's let's stick you know we talk a lot of smack in the shop we better stand behind it <laughs> we better build an off-road <laughs> truck so yeah. yeah yeah definitely i mean i i would i would definitely say that your guys's truck is still pretty spaceship like Compared to you know, true the factory Ford, yeah, I guess <laughs> yeah, with right. the wing and the, but yeah. it definitely stands out, and that's that's really cool yeah. to be in that class with something that's so different. Mm-hmm. We've we've kind of unfortunately pigeonholed it because we can't build a fiberglass cab truck now. Like yeah. 
we've talked about it multiple man how much easier would this be if it was a fiberglass cab you know and like we talked about building a new truck we're like all right we'll just build, build a fiberglass cab truck well now we can't yeah like we, can't. we have to build a steel cab truck we've talked too much smack on the internet <laughs> yeah we're screwed <laughs> but i feel like you guys i've always had a very good understanding of social media and like the the, the fact that you guys are building something different makes you stand out yeah well, that's yeah it's like going back to what i was saying like it has to be relatable like right. it, there are trucks that are way cooler than ours oh yeah. way cooler yeah. way more technologically advanced way cooler parts way faster all this stuff yeah but it's like some guy scrolling through the internet is not gonna click on that to want to see that because it's not that exciting to them it's like oh this is some weird trophy truck thing it all gets like put into this category and boom that gets thrown into a basket but when some guy's like is that a real pickup truck like blasting down <laughs> avenues like what is this all about like you, you'd be surprised how many dms chris and i get because he's got the yeah. f100 too obviously which is pretty close thing but like hey what suspension kit is that yeah. it's like bro you have no idea there's not a kit <laughs> there's going not on anywhere near this you can't walk into four parts <laughs> yeah. and just pick up a kit for this yeah but. you can't pick up an everson spec truck kit for your I, 95 I mean, maybe you could but probably yeah. not <laughs> but but yeah no, that was the thing it's like and for us like we're in a kind of a unique position because like we do rely on outside help to keep the yeah. gears turning around here and so you know keeping traction and keeping like stuff going on the internet is a very very important part of what we do and so when we put a car together we build something we got to think of that aspect as well like yes it's got to be fast it's got to be a race car all those things like that whole tab menu drops down of building a race car but then a, the most important one for us unfortunately and it is and it isn't unfortunate but is making sure that it's something that's marketable it's sellable yeah. it's relatable it's going to be cool and so we kind of got to stick to that Definitely. yeah absolutely i mean you guys are i think one of the only teams doing it so yeah. <clears throat> we're trying yeah we're trying you guys are doing going. a good job <laughs> yeah. speaking of doing good jobs i know i was pretty hard on you guys in the beginning of this you know <laughs> Um, but, uh, 2022 mid 400, you guys won that race we did. and I want to hear about it. Cause, uh, I didn't get to talk to you guys. I saw you guys before the race uh -huh. and I was like, you guys, I told Bill, I told your dad, I was like, you guys are going to win this one. Right. He's like, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then you guys did. Yeah, so we did. Yeah. can we, can we walk through that race? What's the, from beginning to end? So I guess quick overview mid, like winning rate, like the races that we've done really well at have like a pretty solid common denominator and that is that you don't get out of the car yeah like the you have caliente like, races like all the stuff we didn't snore and all that yeah you just have to have that perfect day where you find that balance of like pushing the car and saving the car and keeping the equipment going but also being fast enough and like just keeping your time splits figured out right and like that's pretty much what that day was but like that that day we didn't even we qualified terribly i think we qualified 10 yeah, we qualified poor. Yeah, it wasn't. It was, definitely was. It was. Yeah, it wasn't very well. Yeah, we qualified bad. Started mid pack, and then just went to racing. You know, like green flag drops and you just go. Like, no issues, no nothing. We yeah, we never got out of the car. Like you said, no flat tires. Like, just took fuel and kept going. Yeah, and we were smart with our fueling. Like super smart with fueling because the truck holds ninety five usable gallons, and so it's a little bit of an advantage with some of the other guys. Cause I think they're a little less. So we can go further and we have like beginning of the day, you have your fuel strategy figured out. We're like, Hey, we're going to go this far to stay safe. Cause the truck handles better with this weight, whatever, you know, you right. figure all that out. But that day we kind of kept seeing ourselves being in a position where we're like, Hey, we can like, we can splash fuel. Yeah. We let's, can just like let's short the fuel truck. this thing, like keep it moving on the track. Yeah. So that was, I think that played a huge role in our results in that race. Um, Cause there were unfortunately a lot of guys that played, like i don't know they played with their fuel and they didn't work yeah out. it didn't pay off so yeah. for us we were always on the safe side like we always take fuel whenever we stop but <clears throat> i think it just worked out well it was one of those good days of racing and it's it's crazy there wasn't any big standouts like i know people have said like oh the ones you win there's nothing to real talk about because you're just a boring day driving right. but the ones that you dnf or whatever you've got hours of stories yeah. right yeah but like that race was it was like i don't we like bumped one guy like that was it. Like yeah. that's the only thing that really stood out. We never like had it on the ragged edge, you know. We weren't doing anything crazy. It was like, because even when we got to the finish line, they're like, "Oh, you know, you guys won." And we're like, "Huh?" Like that was like the boringest day of racing. I think really you know. Was. We're just in there and like him and I are clicking, and 
I think the only time I really started getting worked up was towards the end, like when we'd gotten past Householder. Right. We had, still had like 75 miles yeah. to go. Last we, lap. We're first on the road in 6200. Yeah, and six on the road overall. So we're like yeah. out there by ourselves, you know, and like we didn't know where our time split was behind us at that point. And we didn't know what had happened to Adam because Adam had like demanding lead all day long. He had like 10 minutes on everybody. He was on a mission, but he had some fueling issues, came up short and we got by him there. But then after that, I was like, is he going to get back in the truck? Like what's going on? Yeah. And, but you know, you're in that last 70 ish miles or whatever it was. And like, you don't want to go wreck the truck at the end of the day. And that's what you always hear. Like, Oh, I was winning right up until the last couple miles, you know? And so I remember just being on edge and it's like every little corner and like every little, like, what's that noise? Like, what's that creek? Like, oh, I think, oh, oh, oh. I, think I called out every single rock oh that God. I saw. Yeah. Like, I probably annoyed the hell out of him, but it was like, I do not want to get out of this car because I knew if we had to get out and change a flat, we were done. Yeah. Like, this, the field was so stacked. Like, any any little slight issue, we were done. Yeah, and that's, and that's the scary thing. Not scary, but the frustrating thing about spec truck or 6100 is everybody is so close. Like there's there's like two groups, you know, there's like the top running guys, there's probably 10 or 15 guys that run up front, and then there's like the backpack guys. But that top 10 guys, they're all within a minute of each other. And you're like, like this year's mint, like oh, yeah. we come through these canyons, like beer bottle pass or whatever, and we'd be at the top and it had a point to where it almost 180 back on itself. And you'd look down and there's four trucks back there. I was like, ah, oh, like I thought I was doing great. Yeah, Obviously like, not. We had clear air, <laughs> they're in the dust and they're still yeah, right like, there oh, it's like no. how are you guys doing this you yeah know? and it's like when we were kids and you go racing you know it's like okay it's a four lap race lap one we're gonna go sightseeing keep the truck in one piece and then just step it up step it up last lap open her up you know like right. run hard at the last lap you nowadays in 6100 it's 110 percent from the, the green flag to the checkered flag yeah which is it's fun but terrifying right yeah absolutely terrifying yeah. well that feeling once you guys once you guys got up on the stage you know, yeah. after that, you guys seem pretty happy. Oh, so All the hard work. Yeah. yeah it, it was, it yeah. was, it was good. And then that's a good one too. Like it's cool to win a race, but then it's really cool to win a big race like that because you get most of the time you'll win anything else. And you're like, you get your little two minute with George Ann Hill interview about how your race went. They give you a little placard and you drive off on the trailer and you're back to being Joe Schmo. Doing something like the Mint, you're up on that podium, you know what I mean? And you get the champagne and you got all the people taking pictures and it's like... And your entire crew is standing right there. Yeah. Everybody that helped you just yeah. win this race is right there and you guys all get to celebrate together and yeah. do and the whole You get thing. to celebrate. Most off road races, yeah. it's like, get it on the trailer, you got to drive three hours home, like whatever it is, you know? Yeah. That one was like, it felt like you did something, you know? It felt like you won an NASCAR race, you know? I was like getting ready to drink a bottle of coca-cola or whatever you know <laughs> yeah. do some nascar stuff but yeah that one was was very cool it makes you hungry definitely makes you hungry to want to do that some more yeah but yeah that was a great feeling that was a good race it was, it was boring race yeah but good it was good <laughs> no wait didn't didn't we have a with thor herbs yeah the entire time with herbs yeah but like back and forth with him and pigs like, jumped the speed zone and threw rocks and broke the visor off my helmet right at the start yeah yeah yeah. that was cool yeah like There's literally mile marks of four yeah. yeah that was not fun and then yeah we went back and forth like he'd get a flat we'd get by him we'd stop for fuel he'd get by us and so we're all just kind of dicing back and forth yeah but it was just standard that's the thing you get so desensitized to this stuff now right. it's like <clears throat> the stuff we used to be like oh my god this was the craziest thing like i was on this dude's bumper for like whatever and like we passed him in this cool spot when you race 6100, that's the whole time. Yeah. Like from beginning to end, you're just drag racing door to door. Like everybody's within five mile an hour top speed. Because so. they're all the same engine. Same, like. Yeah. And it's just massaging gear ratios and aero packages and all this yeah. stuff. And so, yeah, you're literally just dead nuts chasing each other all day long. It's just who has better line choice, who's smoother in the corners and all that stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah it's stressful. That's awesome. Though. I mean, that's 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 part of the thrill mm -hmm. absolutely that's racing yeah that's racing yeah that's racing, yeah. <laughs> that's racing. That's racing. <laughs> <laughs> classic <laughs> um all right uh let's uh let's move away from dirt for a second oh boy um nick you've been spending a lot of time sliding sideways in parking lots yeah um is that just for fun or are you trying to 100 percent for fun i mean It looks really fun to like take this whole drifting stuff to the next level. 
Like you watch FD, you watch all the competition stuff, you watch dudes with big V8s and dog boxes and all this stuff. And you're like, yeah, that would be really cool. <laughs> yeah. But we're jaded and like, I understand what's on the back end of all that. That's like outside looking into off-road racing. Like, oh, I want to do that. But like, I know what goes into making a program like that run at the level that it needs to and the level that we would need it to run at. Right. And so, yes, drifting is for fun and for fun only forever. Like, All right, we'll, we'll check back in a year. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> We're going to have three drift cars sitting <laughs> yeah. here and a toter outside and yeah. everything's wrapped up and ready to go to FD. And Yeah. yeah. But Maybe. It, it, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Drifting is seriously, I don't know. I put it up there with off-road racing. It's fun. And I think it's just a relaxing aspect of it for me is like there's no real stress. There's no pressures. Like the only thing I'm worried about is myself and like how I drive, which is a nice change. Like with these things, like, you know, you got a whole team of guys counting on you. You put hours and hours of work into it. And you're like, oh, better not screw this up for everybody. Yeah. The drift car, it's just like me and my dually by myself usually with like on the trailer. I'm like, I can't wait to go driving. This is going to be a fun day. And it's like if I wreck the car, it's like, shucks, put it on the trailer, take it home. So that that part's very nice. Yeah, that's awesome. Chris, are you going to follow him into sliding sideways in, in parking lots? I would like to, yeah. I've got a BMW that I built that I have yet to do anything with. And I probably built it a year and a half ago, two years ago. Just what sits. are you waiting for? Uh, I don't know. I have <laughs> no idea. <laughs> have you gone out with him? Yeah, yeah. I've okay. ridden with him. Yeah. And stuff like that. Does he let you drive? No. I mean, he's handed me the steering wheel, but I, I don't want to crash his car. I don't want to work <laughs> on the thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ain't yeah. mine. <laughs> That's something we always talk about. Like, you know, when everybody probably watching this thinks drift videos and all they think is like Instagram videos of guys just like on each other's doors and like swapping bumpers on transitions and all that stuff. But like, me and my friends, when we go drifting, we call it like the over 30 getting do- getting doors where we're all like a car length apart because <laughs> none of us want to work on our cars. <laughs> like, like, oh man, did you see how close we got? And we're like, you could, you could drive a semi truck between the two of us because <laughs> like we all, we all hate working on cars more than we enjoy driving them, if that makes sense. So we're like, nope, just keep it good, safe distance. Like, no tandeming with randoms like just what we're out there in our little posse of like old dudes with old nissans and like yeah. nostalgic cars and we just have fun in our own little realm yeah. and it's like every now and then one of us will get all fired up you're like oh all right you know you're touching tires on the door and we're like oh hey, 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 hey easy easy hey, pump yeah. the brakes man <laughs> yeah, you can't find like... these doors anymore <laughs> i feel like i've seen dylan get pretty close to you yeah, well dylan does that though dylan's <laughs> dylan's in his own world <laughs> <sighs> yeah yeah that's awesome uh well yeah I want to see I want to see more drifting I, I want to see you out there too because yeah, you we can do that yeah you got to get out there just got to pump up the tire pressure in the old BMW and yeah let her eat. are you gonna are you gonna do uh, the BMW in the same livery that your that your trucks in <laughs> bl- flat black with gold I mean, pinstripes it'd be very flashy for me to do that like <laughs> I'm coming out hot look at this car you suck at drifting <laughs> what are you doing <coughs> I should probably figure out how to drift first. You know, nah, it's marketing. It's marketing. marketing. That's yeah. right. That's the cool thing about drifting and off-road racing. You can like be trash. Photos look cool though. A little sideways with some smoke. Like, oh man, that guy's really getting yeah. He's it. getting after. Meanwhile, it. it's just him spinning out. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, doing donuts. Yeah, yeah. pretty terrible. Editing does a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just cut, cut, cut. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, maybe it'll get the same, same wrap and, and yeah. everything. That would be a pretty cool uh, fleet photo. It would right. be the tr- two trucks and the two drift cars. Marketing. Marketing. All right. <laughs> what are we get to wrap next week? All right. All right. <laughs> um, this new Lightning. What's going on with this new Ford? You like going slow over rocks now or what? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. It's it, nice. What can I say? Well, it's f- so cut back about a year ago, this guy hated rock crawling. Like with it. a passion. He's like, I hate it. It's too stressful. I can't do it. I absolutely. You drive. Like, all right whatever and then we built him a lightning he's like oh my god it's the best thing ever well, you know what to be fair <laughs> this is the first time i've ever had something four-wheel drive that i own right i'm always driving somebody else's stuff like yeah, there's always yeah. company cars when i worked at four-wheel parts or somebody else's side by side or whatever it was and the whole time i'm like dude i don't want to break this dude's car or i don't want to wreck this thing so there's like that anxiety aspect of it yeah. but now that i'm in my own car like i don't care <laughs> like yes i want to keep it straight the, as long as i can but yeah like we went to Fordyce a couple weeks ago, and Homer found a rock. Big rock. 
Yeah, so in the door. Yeah, the whole driver's side door has got like a good rock. Like it's not terrible. Like he missed the door jam, luckily, but it's like middle of the door. Yeah, <laughs> smashed it. I mean, it was bound to happen. Yeah, you know. But I was just trying to prolong it a little bit. Like this yeah. is the second time driving it on the rocks, and right. I crunched the door and and the tail light too. And the tail light. But I think that's just inevitable. But no, that truck's my favorite right now. Yeah, it's so simple, so low maintenance, and it's the places it takes you is really cool. Like we took it to Moab. And like gotten to getting to see all those spots and see all that cool stuff, and then like going up northern Northern California, yeah. and doing Ford Ice and all that, like it's pretty cool. I'm very interested in taking that more places and doing more fun stuff with it, and circling all back to the whole marketing and social media and all that stuff. Like that's extremely obtainable. Like oh, anybody yeah. can. It's Super Duty axles. It's a '95. Ford Lightning, which you don't have to do a Lightning. You can just do a regular F-150. Yeah, it's an F-150 with like a desolate bolt-on front suspension with Super Duty axles front and rear. You could leave it leaf sprung and it worked fine. And then you drive it. Like, that's <laughs> it. Ultimately, just drive it. Yeah. Like, it's got a stock Bronco uh, transmission and transfer case in it. We don't talk about that. It's a very fragile little piece. Yeah. We don't talk about the transfer <laughs> yeah. case on that thing. But like, knock on wood, it's been fine since, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, and it's like maintenance on that is changing the oil and changing the air filters and just right. nut and bolt checking it's it. not like these stupid things where they got to come down to chassis every time you drive yeah. them you know so it's nice like yeah we've got well i guess three we did a film trip last week so we've got three three rock trips in that thing yeah and all i do is like add things to it like, yeah. i'm not fixing it i'm not repairing stuff i'm just yet, cleaning anyway. it inspecting it and then like oh i kind of want to add a better cooler mount or I'll put the high lift on here yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. that's where like people get goofed up is when they start adding all this wild horsepower to these rock crawlers it's like yeah it's cool to burn the tires off spinning on rocks and locked up and 40s making all the smoke but then you're just gonna break things yeah you know like I'm big low i'm a big low horsepower guy yeah. drift cars <laughs> low horsepower four by four trucks low horsepower the race trucks low horsepower <laughs> big low horsepower guy <laughs> save the equipment yeah that's awesome yeah I, I really like i feel like that truck came together so fast 15 days <laughs> yeah and i like looked at instagram and you like you had a lightning i was like oh cool and then i looked at instagram again and it was like done yeah i was like cool that was, it <laughs> was a lot of work. it was 15 hours after work like not even like or 15 days after work like not a full 10 hour days yeah i mean we were doing 10 hour days but they started at five at night yeah and they'd go till whenever um but yeah we just stacked a bunch of parts because we wanted to get to ejs take a truck to a jeep safari it was pretty cool but um but yeah, we just like stacked all the parts and it was like Chris, Ian, my dad, and myself, and we're like, we can do this. Yeah, it can't got, be that hard. It's just weeks. a couple things. It's just a little weld in here and there. <laughs> the front bolts on. And then like the transmission and transfer case are out of a Bronco. So I had to like cause the lightnings are two wheel drive. So I just pulled this two wheel drive transmission out, put a whole Bronco drivetrain up and in there, cut a hole in the floor for the gear selector for the transfer case and and yeah. it was four wheel drive. And then, yeah, everything else just kind of came together. It was nice to fab on that thing, too, because yeah. we could MIG weld it all. And it was like, yeah. I'm, like, plasma cutting plates out, like, tabs out, and just cleaning up with an angle grinder and, like, hope, like just drilling holes, like, not even making sure everything's perfect. I'm like, oh, this is going to be fine. And then burning it in the frame, no issues. Like, the race cars, you're like, oh, I better maybe have somebody draw it. Yeah. Should we, like, broach the holes? Got to put weld washers yeah. on everything. Having everything laser and press. It's all got to be chrome stuff. Yeah. That thing, I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm just like quarter inch plate. Yeah. Everywhere. Not really. I look like one of them fabricator dudes on the internet. I had like a jacket on and stuff, just cutting stuff and just welding <laughs> junk. I'm like, this is great. I love fabricating again. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. A lot less thought goes into that thing. Yeah. Still a nice truck. But... It is. Yeah. It all came out really well. But yeah. it, it was fun. Just... The yeah. kids love it. The kids call it a monster truck. That's yeah. awesome. It's the best part. I feel like, yeah, that's definitely the best part. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Cool. Well, uh, Chris, I know I've been pretty hard on you this, this, you know, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> but, uh, you have an RC car that looks like your truck and Nick doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. So that one is way cooler. <laughs> <laughs> so can we talk about this? You guys have an RC car. We do. We were very fortunate to uh, have Proline reach out to us about what, two years ago. Yeah, I think so. This two, two years, years ago. ago, they did the Traxxas slash and the UDR body of the F100. Um, and we established a relationship with them and then they wanted to redo the, uh, Baja Ray 2.0. 
Um, and then they came to us and like, hey, we want to redesign this whole truck. We want to use the F100 and brand it and do everything as this truck. We're like, absolutely. Like, it's a dream come true. You know, like ever since we were like little kids, it was like, we want RC cars to match the race cars or vice versa, you know. And now we have this and we're like, oh my gosh, this is so rad. It's super know? sick. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. It's That's cool to have your name like on the door of a toy. Like, yeah, and it's, it's so cool. It's sold. Yeah. I don't know if it's sold worldwide. It might be, but nationwide for sure. You know, and like we get tagged and stuff all the time on social media. And like, there's unboxing of like some kid. Like I watched one uh, the other day. It was a YouTube video, and this kid was getting it for his birthday, and he's so pumped. It's the F100. You know, and I've never met this kid in my life, and I was like, oh my god, that's it. Oh, real. It's pretty it's cool. Pretty cool. That's so awesome. Yeah. It just like expands, like you get to like it just yeah. takes off road racing across the United States. Yeah, off road racing is such like a little niche thing. You know what I mean? It's it's a Southern California, like Nevada, Arizona, like that's desert racing. But when it goes into like a hobby like this or RC cars, that's something nationwide. Like right. anybody can buy that, and it it's cool to just have that reach and just show like, hey, share a sport that we're so passionate about with people across the country. Yeah, and like hey, like look at this, and then they'll look at what we do, and it's just. It's cool. Yeah. I just love to just try and make off-road racing bigger. And I think this is just a great tool to help that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's like when we were younger, you know, we'd like tune up the RC car because like before we had the trucks and stuff, we're like always trying to make them like an off-road truck. So hopefully this inspires the younger generation to like continue into the off-road world, you know, like it yeah. did for us. That's awesome. Yeah. I, uh, my friend Blake has always had RC cars and I've never bought an RC car before. And I'm going to buy one of those because yeah. it, there's, it's just so that's, cool. You, <laughs> you know, what's funny is like, that's what a lot of people are saying to you. Cause like we, we have a good amount of our C cars here in the shop yes. and a lot of our friends are always like, Oh my God, what are you guys, what is this? What are you doing with that? I don't get it. The rock crawlers the this. And then this came out they're like, Hey, hey that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. Like, <laughs> I, could you give me a price on that? <laughs> like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So yeah. do you guys get, this doesn't have to go in, but do you guys get commission off all that? Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. The first time we didn't, Oh yeah, and that was, that was our not. It's kind of our bad, right? Because we didn't realize the scale of this. So the first time Proline approached us about this, we didn't realize who it was. It's actually Kyle's cousin, that guy Vance. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. Does the design work for some just, design work? Oh yeah, yeah, he told me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. And we were just like, we thought it was just some dude wanting to build a replica car, and we're like, why does he want licensing for all these companies? Like, yeah, it's fine. Like, you want oh, to whatever. sign stuff? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Like right. you're building one car. Like who cares? And then we got like an email. It's like, oh, we want to confirm this before the first production order of 5,000 or whatever. And we're just like, huh. <laughs> oh, like you're making these. Got it. And then we started digging deep into it and realized what it was. And we're like, huh, our bad. Yeah, yeah no, this is cool. <laughs> but it's like we didn't get commission off of the first uh, UDR and Slash Bodies, but it also gave us the relationship that we have now yeah. with right. Horizon Hobby, which it is now, mm -hmm. um, to be able to do this car yeah. yeah that's awesome you know and we got a bunch of our c cars in trade yeah that's the best part and everybody over there you know brian and everybody over there is so nice and yeah. genuine you know there's like whatever you guys need like you guys can have it let's do some rad stuff like yeah, you help us we'll help you like let's do some cool stuff like absolutely it's a fun company to work with yeah for sure because awesome. they're just like they're enthusiasts for that hobby and for like rc and scale stuff just like we're enthusiasts for off-road racing. Right. And so it's like we share that passion of just right. like being engulfed in something. And it's it, fun when they cross over. It's like Brian came down to the shop to film like a, a deal with a car. And he's just like staring at the truck. He's like, man, this stuff's so cool, blah, blah, blah. And we're like staring at the RC car. Like, man, this stuff's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah, I guess we kind of just switch worlds. Yeah. You know? That's awesome. I feel like that's another thing that like you guys put in so much work into making the trucks what they do, like do what they do and branding them the certain way. And then this is like another offshoot of your reach, yeah. you know, into a completely different world. Yeah, I think so too. It's just cool that it's like crosses over and like, I don't know, it's just like, I wish I could say that all of this was planned. Yeah, because it's not. No. Like we, we have not like written all this out. Like, all right, year three, we're doing yeah. this. Year yeah. five, we're, we're going to scan this for two years. No, it's yeah. just been like, Hey, you want to do this? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, it kind of turned out kind of cool. Let's yeah. keep doing this. Every night I drive home from the shop, just kind of like, we're screwing up. We're screwing up. We yeah. got to do something wrong. Like, this is not working. Like, 
man, what's next? What's next? What's next? I'm like, that's, that, that's heavy on the shoulders. Like to make yeah. all this work is like, got to try and stay ahead. Got to try and stay ahead. Like what's the next fun thing or the this or whatever. And it's like, you don't want to just, you know, culture vulture and like just right. chase what's hip and happening. Like we want it. It's got to be interested in it. It's something we're into where it's like four bar four stuff. Very interested in that. Always have been. It's cool. It's fun. It's bitching. So now let's try some of this stuff. Yeah. Drifting. Something I've been passionate about for 10 years. And like now it's like at the point to where I'm like, oh, cool. We can go do it at this level now. Right. And it's just, I don't know, but it's, it's tough, man. Trying to find that balance of being authentic and cool. I think the next fun. thing we're going to do is racing RC cars. Yep. Way yes. less work. Way less work. You don't need a trailer. <laughs> yeah. No. You don't need a dually. No. No. Fits in a you backpack. Can, you can travel. You can get wide. a scale one. You can get a yeah. scale trailer with a scale you. dually. Yeah. Don't even start it, dude. That's a real thing. It I know. I know. I've seen thing. it. Yeah. But um, I think some do a, of the... a, a mini shop, a scale version of the shop. Oh, no. it's real. Yeah. No, there are yeah. like we get tagged and stuff, and it's like, wow, like that's a real. No, that's not a real shop. Oh, that's cr- a real yeah. shop. Yeah. Uh, wow. Me and Chris, and then um, Ian from Proline as well. He's one of the design guys. Like. I'm always sending him like stuff. I'm like, is this real or is this an RC? Because like some of these dudes are like, like, like very the, like good. Like the drivers at it. inside the cabs are yeah. moving, the arms are heads really? are moving. Yeah. Such a cool hobby. I'm like, it's, oh, yeah. I want to do this. I have time for that. I remember we, um, I, I shot a Losi commercial when the, I think it was the first Baja Ray came out, mm-hmm. and when we played the footage in slow motion, it legitimately looks like a real yeah. truck. Oh yeah. I was like, this is. I mean, it makes sense because like when Hollywood shoots miniatures. Yes. It's just slowed down at a certain scale. Right. And like it looks exactly like a real truck. Yeah. That's like, like inter- works the same and then like in Terminator when the gas truck blows up, that's a model. What? Yeah. Yeah. That is like cool like there's yeah, an there's... Instagram page like Terminator behind the scenes and it's got all the like how they made all those shots. It's my favorite thing to see. Wow. <laughs> but no there's a lot of Terminator influence with you guys. Yeah, it's a good movie. It's I mean it's one of the best movies. It's the future. Okay. It's the <laughs> <laughs> Skynet. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, yeah. So, racing RC cars. That's what's next. What's next? What's What's the next? Uh, we We next continue move? that conversation daily. Yeah. We don't know what's next. What are we gonna do next? You know. And it's a strange time in stateside off road racing. We're trying to figure out like where to go and what to do. Yeah. Mexico is something we've always talked about, but it's just a whole different ball game for us. Like. On the financial level, yeah. logistics, like we don't really have enough chase trucks for all that. We're not very fluent in going down there and understanding the ins and the outs. So it's a little t- intimidating to take everything we own down south. Yeah. Um, so I think the rest of this year, we're just kind of playing it out, just going to try and pick and choose some fun stuff to do. There's a lot of really cool events coming up with Terra and with like kind of more play side of things. Yeah. And then there's a couple cool races at the end of the year that we'll probably tag into. Yeah. Um, yeah, that speed metal event seemed so fun, like from a driver perspective. Yeah, that was a very, very well laid out and fun event overall. Yeah. Because he, he said we started driving at, what, 9 in the morning or mm-hmm. something like that and didn't stop driving till like probably 7, 30, 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, it was a full day of everything. And it wasn't just like off-road trucks or just drift cars. It was a mixture of both. You'd drive the off-road car for an hour, three hours, whatever it was, and jump in the drift cars and then jump back and then yeah. jump back. It was a very well laid out event that's the most seat time i've gotten in my life i think (laughs) yeah it was cool with different disciplines too exactly (laughs) the same day (laughs) it was fun and it was cool to like get to show the off-road group of people the drift side of things which is a great like translation like off-road guys can drive drift cars it's the same you know discipline like you're sliding a car just like you do in a truck and then it was really cool to show all the drift guys what off-road trucks are because a lot like, of the guys had no idea. No. Like, you guys are going to jump your truck over a road? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We got this. this. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. So that was really, really, really cool to be able to just share with the community both sides. Like, two things I'm very passionate about and be able to show everybody. Oh, very cool. So big props to Tara for that. And I know yeah. that there's big plans for next year. I think it's going to yep. potentially turn into, like, a bigger scale of everything. So. Oh, yeah. I could totally see that being something huge. Oh, from yeah. from a filmmaking standpoint, it was awesome. I could go shoot drift cars and then go shoot you guys jumping over a road. Yeah. That <laughs> seemed way too big. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got to give it to that kid, Zach. Like, he hit it big. Um, he was the first one. Eric, to hit yeah. Eric's son, Zach, the kid. He mm, hit yeah, the yeah. – I think he either him or Ken – but the two of them, they went back to back and hit it the first time, and 
It was huge. Like Intimidating I, to look at. Yeah. I was like, I, I, sat, I didn't hit it. He didn't jump it. No, I was just like, nah, man, I just oh, put no. a cab on this truck. <laughs> I am not fitting to do this again. Yeah. I'm going to sit this one out. I got a good shot of you on the little one. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Maybe next year you get the, get the big one. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that was, I was a little intimidated by that jump at first. I sat there and looked at it, looked at it, and looked at it, and I was like, I should be able to do this. I shouldn't do this, but I should be able to do this. But I have to do this because I'm the only one here with like a purpose built race car. Yeah. <laughs> and if I don't do it, then what is wrong with me? Yeah. Like I would better do it. Yeah, there was some really nice pre runners jumping that. What was that? It was like a black It was like a sixty five F one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. that sixties yeah. car. Yeah. Yeah. He asked me, he's like, How fast do you think I should go? I'm like, zero. <laughs> Zero, like, don't, don't do it. This truck is way too nice. Don't do not do that. <laughs> don't jump it. Stay away from those whoops. Keep that thing in one piece. And he that thing works great. Like, yeah. He puts great work into that truck and <laughs> yeah. handles fine. Yeah, he jumped it. I was like, wow. Like, all right. Hats off to you. Yeah, party on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when well, I was standing in front of it and like watching all of the trucks go so high in the air yeah. was insane. It was a big one. And then like we caught that, like second half of the day, we caught that headwind. So the truck was kind of floating the nose a little mm, bit more. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay. I think I only did it like two or three times yeah. at the end of the day. And I was like, all right, that's it. Like yeah. things are going to get weird. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. Well, uh, let's put a nice bow on this thing. Sure. Last question, uh, which I think we weren't asking the first time we did this but at the end of every story time we ask what does racing mean to you gives my life purpose oh god (laughs) (laughs) real deep real real deep (laughs) um yeah i don't know i think racing to me has i don't think it means anything to me it's just a way of my life or our life we've never so it's more of an identity in the last how many years have we done 15, 16 years? Whatever it is. Since 2007 to now, somebody do math. Yeah. Somebody smarter than Whatever me. it is. Anyway, we've never missed nobody a knows. year of racing. Like, we have always raced at least one to two races every year since we started. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's like we don't really know anything else. And, yeah, it's, and it's taught <laughs> us so much, too. Like, you know, the discipline of, like, you know, everything from saving money to fabricating things. Yeah. Like, it teaches you so much, and it's just so... And the amount of people that you meet in this industry... You know, yeah. like the friendships that you develop and everything. So, what does racing mean? I don't even know. I, I don't think you can really put a word on it. You know? I don't have a word for it. Yeah. Sorry for ruining your interview. Yeah. <laughs> if, an if somebody has a great word for what is racing, drop it in the we comments. We should have watched Whoa. somebody else's. First. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we've done a. We've collected a lot of these now. So yeah. now this is forever. You know, Failures. I think my plan is to put together a bigger documentary. Uh, with all of these answers because yeah. we've interviewed a, a lot of people and gotten that answer mm-hmm. uh, and it's just such a cool thing to have yeah. like, solidified I mean racing means so much to so many different people you know it's like right. it's a, an outlet for my adrenaline or it's a you know a great time to spend with family or it's and none Which of those are is. wrong yeah yeah like all of it's right it, it's just racing is such a great combination of just all the good things in life you know like working hard and doing fun stuff and enjoying life and it's just everything it's like in the moment of prepping the cars you're like why am i doing this but then you like cross the finish line you're like yeah all right let's do this again (laughs) you're just like huh all right let's do this again yeah sure (laughs) forgot about all that other stuff now (laughs) yeah 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 you 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 forget about things like king the hammers you know like i'll never come back we keep coming back (laughs) yeah dude that's it every (laughs) Pretty much every race, like, yeah, I don't know if we're going to do that next year. That was a lot. Like, that like was... we had the conversation uh, yesterday or the day before. We're like, all right, Rage of the River. We're not doing that this year. Oh, yeah. And then we're like, yeah, but we've never missed it. Yeah, it's We'll probably le- go back. We've raced Laughlin <laughs> 11 years in a row. Yeah. Like, there's no way we can't yeah. not go back. Yeah. We had literally, we blew an engine up and crashed Chris's truck. Arguably a terrible Laughlin. Yeah. Terrible. Like that Sunday going home, we're like, we're never coming. No. Out. Like, we're done. done. Yeah, we're just racing the big ones. Like, no more. Now we're just like, well, I mean, we never missed a year. The kids get to hang out. <laughs> get to camp. Get to watch racing. Yeah, we'll probably go. <laughs> we'll probably be there. Yeah. Oh, it's only a month before, like, beginning of the season racing? We got oh. it. Nah, it's fine. We got yeah. it. <laughs> That's awesome. So, yeah, what does racing mean to us? I, I, An addiction? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I think so. There's no real word for it. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Appreciate it. Got Thank it. you. Smash that subscribe. Hit the bell at the top. Yeah. Subscribe yeah. and like leave button. some comments. Tag for tag. Yeah. Shout out. If you comment. <laughs> like for like. Ooh. Okay. Tag three friends. Thank you, guys. No. Thank you. <laughs>